but Nick, to uh, continue on the ask, you know, you talked about being a bouncer. Uh, what made you want to be a bouncer and what were your uh, best and worst experiences? Um, it was money, man. <laughs> you know, it was, uh, uh, you know, uh, I was, you know, training. I was, you know, I got kicked out of school when I was 16. So yeah. I didn't, I didn't have a high school diploma. I mm. couldn't really get much of a job. So um, I was like, okay, well, what's the easiest, fastest way I could make money, right? And, you know, at the same time I was training, I'm like, you know what, I might as well go work at a club and make yeah. like, you know, I was making, you know, close Good to like you know, four to 600 bucks a week, yeah. you, you know what I mean, cash. In in not days. too shabby. Not that, no, that's not, yeah, that's, nice, did, that's nice money, you know, when you are still young. Yeah, I mean, and, and so I was making that money, and at the same time, I was still able to keep my training and actually be able to be like, okay, well, now nah, I'm actually learning what really works and what doesn't. Yeah. So for me, it was kind of like, you know what? It was, it was for money, but at the same time, I had my whole week free, and I was able to yeah. train, and you know, it was three nights, even though, mind you, I did it for almost you know, six, seven, eight years. I can't even remember. I mean, at the end, I was just exhausted of being up till four in the morning, uh, fights, the adrenaline, uh, everything that yeah. came with it. Did, you're, did, were, you know, were you also a little bit, you know, like uh, addicted to the adrenaline? Because some people get that, you know, some people you see, even see it with pro fighters, you know, they, once they quit, you know, they either, you know, stay, stay fighting too long or they, you know, go do something like skydiving because they, you know, they just can't handle that, uh, not having that adrenaline anymore. No, because... You know, it's not the same adrenaline. All right. Right? Uh, meaning, you know, even though you're working at a club, a security, or you work as a bouncer, you work, I mean, when shit hits the fan, you don't, you don't know who you're dealing with. And you don't know if the guy's got a weapon. You don't know yeah. if he's going to wait for you at 3.30 with 10 of his buddies to jump you. Yeah. So it's not the type of adrenaline you get out of like, I'm going to do something really exciting. Yeah. It's an adrenaline where there's a fight or flight and an adrenaline as well. So it's, it's, mm -hmm. it's, you know, I remember after the adrenaline dump, after the fight, you're like completely exhausted because it's yeah. not like you're fighting, you know, fighting, you know, five rounds of five minutes, you know, it's more exhausting to fight one minute for your life than five rounds, five minutes. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Be beat. Yeah. It's kind of like that measurement. Like uh, when you're fighting inside of a competitive sport, you have the choice of how you measure your um, energy expenditure. When you're fighting on the street, you don't know how much energy you need to use to walk away safely. Yeah. There's no commission. There's no referee. There's no judge saying, hey, and, you and, need to keep and, the fight active. And the adrenaline, uh, the adrenaline as well, it's two different types of adrenaline. And here's the problem with a lot of, like a lot of people that teach, some people who teach self-defense, there's a lot of stuff they don't teach because they can't teach it unless you've lived it. So when I talk about adrenaline in the ring, you're here. So you, you pace it. Goes yeah. up, goes down. Goes up, goes down. You're not really fighting for your life. You don't go into exhaustion. Yeah. Whereas yeah. in the street, you're going boom. You're going from zero to 100 in a split second. You're going to last maybe 30 seconds, a minute, a minute and a half. And after that, you know, chances are you're going to gas out because it's a yeah. different type of adrenaline. Even it's, pro it's, fighters who, who, you know, had self-defense, uh, we was you know, you know, uh, Dean, do you know Dean Lister? Yeah. I, I watched his video. Yeah. You know, he, yeah, he, he got a guy, you know, who broke into his home, you know, and he, he luckily he had to gun himself because the guy had an ex or something like that or a knife. I don't, I don't remember, but even a guy like that, you know, he chooses to use a gun instead because he said, you know, he, he's like, then I can keep distance, but you know, even Dean Lister, you know, he's a great jujitsu guy, but he, even him, you know, he cho chooses, yeah, he, he, you know, he, he chooses to, uh, used, you know, the, the safest option for him. And, you yeah, know, even he said after the fact, you know, that he was completely drained. Yeah, because it's, it's I mean, when you experience both of them, you, you see the difference. You feel the difference. You know, you're not, you're not sitting there trying to, you want to finish it as fast as possible. And I tell this to, to people that I train, the longer the fight lasts, the more you, the less to your advantage. Mm -hmm. 
So if, if it's lasted 30 seconds and you haven't finished it, start thinking of getting the fuck out. Mm-hmm. Because you should finish it within three to 10 seconds or 15 seconds. Like, I mean, once you explode, bam, bam. If you're there to the point where you're like sparring with him and you haven't finished it, like. What went wrong? <laughs> what went wrong? Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's what I focus on. And that's where, you know, you're, you're, you're teaching people on how to go preemptive, how to set up the first strike, what to yeah. hit with. That, those first few seconds are the most important seconds in a fight. But I you think can't neglect it, them. I think that's very difficult uh, to teach, you know, to non-violent people. Because, you know, if, if uh, a person comes to, you know, to your gym, like I said, you know, a normal guy or a normal, normal woman, you know, who, who has never fought in their life, but, you know, they, they feel threatened because they, for their, for, you know, for their job, for example, you know, they have to walk through certain areas in, in the city. They come to you, you know, for self-defense. How do you get them to that level, you know, of uh, them, you know, that they do, uh, that they are able to hit somebody, that they are able to explode, you know? I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do, there's a, there's, a, there's a few things I'm going to do, right? Yeah. One, I'm just going to develop their instinct to start hitting, right? Mm-hmm. Hit and don't think. They just start hitting, right? Then I'm going to teach them some, you know, some more techniques yeah. and proper way of striking, then I'm going to do drills where I'm going to exhaust them. Okay, skip rope for two minutes. Give me burpees for two minutes. Run up and down the stairs where they're like, <sighs> hit the bag, 10 seconds, go. Bah! And like just, <clears throat> right? Out, I'm, yeah. I'm going to exhaust them and then put them to, and I'm going to do scenarios. Where I'm going to put the helmets on, the helmet, the gear. Yeah. I'm going to attack them for like overkill. I mean, even when they're hitting me, I'm still fighting them. For but two, even, three minutes. Even with a, you know, with a training knife, if I, you know, see your videos of you, you know, really trying to stab somebody, it, I know it's a training knife, you know, and the guy who, who trains you, with you uh, knows it's a, it's a training knife. But you see in his face, you know, that, that maybe not scared, but he is very aware that he is being stabbed, you know, when he stabbed. feels that in his neck. Yeah, because I'm also attacking him, you know, not like this. I'm still fucking going i'm still oh, grabbing him i'm still going you know, at it i hate that i saw that so many times you know at self-defense classes you know the fake ones here in some gyms they just come at you with you know one step and and i'm like that's not how you know if i was a violent person i would just you know try to hurt you as much as possible you know before you you have a you know before you can respond so an attacker you know attackers are mostly not dumb people you know they have already have street smarts yeah, and, and, and that's the problem, right? And I've, I've, I've said this before in one of my videos. People say, well, you're developing muscle memory. And I'm like, no, that's not muscle memory, right? If I'm hitting the bag, if I'm, that's muscle memory because I'm wiring something that yeah. is irrelevant to his movement, Yeah. right? So if you're, if you're telling me I'm building muscle memory and I'm going one, well, how do I know what's two? He might try to punch me. He might try to take me down. I might grab the arm. I might not. So yeah. the idea that I could train for every possible sequence, for every possible attacker who will react the same way in the context of the same environment is impossible. Yeah. And this is why I like to teach people the concepts, the <laughs> principles, the strategies that you need Meaning, yeah. if, you're, if, if you're attacked in your car or you're attacked in an elevator, what's, what's, the, what's the common denominator here is you're in close quarter. Yeah. Absolutely. Right? What's the principle against the knife? You got to trap it. Now, a car is even worse because you don't have footwork. Mm-hmm. You can't move away. You can't move away. An yeah. elevator... You have footwork, so it changes a little bit. But it's still fairly so, scary, in my opinion. You know, it's so close. You know, you can't run. You can't do and It's, no. you know, you have to cleanse. You have to come forward. See, like, I mean, at one point, um, I made a video running against the knife. I don't know if you saw it. Yeah, with uh, Helen, right? With Helen, yeah. And yeah. Because people, like, I get, you're an idiot. Just run. You're going to get people killed. You're stupid. Yeah. I get all these comments. And I'm like, okay, fucker. Let's see if running yeah. works. It, unless you have over 20 feet of yeah. open space and you see it in time and you see it in time and you can run faster than me maybe mm-hmm. if 
you're in a closed space, less than 20 feet, and you have to move an object, open yeah. a door. By the time those two, three seconds it takes you to just open the door, yeah. move, I've already stabbed you. But that's also, you know, like I said, you know, with an attacker, you know, an experienced attacker, you know, an experienced robber, he uh, is going to attack you in an elevator. He is going to attack you in a staircase, you know. Uh, it's close quarter. It's yeah, close you know, quarter. He is He's going not going to pull out the knife 20 feet away and say, I'm coming. No, you know exactly. What I mean? You know, he knows what they he's do doing really most of the time. They really consider that guy they did, just saying. But, you know, hey, it's what's also happening? You're sometimes... for a mugging. I have a knife, so uh, let's make this work. You have 20 feet, I'm coming. That'd be you really know, considerate, but, it's but also, they're not. But in my mind, very scary because I saw a video of, you know, like a family, they were walking across the, uh, across the street. It. Yeah, and there was this crazy oh, whim, woman, you know, who, who came up to the boy. And, you know, it, was, it, it looked like she was, you know, just going to pat his face. And then she stabbed him in the face. And luckily, the boy survived and everything. You know, he, 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 he is well now. But that could have gone very, very bad. Could have been much worse. It, it was it, it was in daylight. It was in daylight. You know, it was a woman. You know, you, you don't expect to be uh, stabbed by a woman most of the time. So I mean, but you see, it's it's that it's that like, and, and you know, I'm just gonna go back to something when we talked about pressure testing. Yeah. If if you don't pressure test stuff, and properly with logic, then you won't know. So if I if you were at my gym right now and you told me, well, Nick, I'm just gonna run against the knife. Great. Okay. Um, I'm gonna grab a marker, and whenever you run, whenever you want, just run right through the door. I'm going to stab you. Let's do it again. Why? It doesn't work. Right? You need this many. Let's try it again. Let's try it in an elevator, yeah. a staircase. Let's try it in a soccer field. What happens? Right? So when you pressure test, you see for yourself the fire what works and yeah. what doesn't work. And then you understand the concept is when I'm in close quarter, I need to trap a knife. I could only parry it so long. Didn't you also now, do this drill yeah. with uh, the cop, you know, like from New York? Didn't you also do yeah. it something... I can't remember what it was, 25 feet or something? Yeah, 22 feet. 22, yeah. So we said we had 22 feet. Somebody said go. By the time he pulled out his gun, I stabbed him. And that's why I tell people, right, when, when an officer tells you, you know, show me your hands, show him your hands because he, I understand. Like I got into an argument with somebody, you know, a neighbor a couple of weeks ago, and he's like, He's like, oh, all these cops, man, you know, they go out killing people. You know what I mean? I'm like, yeah. Okay, they, like, I, 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 okay, at this point, I know the guy's stupid, right? Like, I mean, I, yeah. I don't argue with him. And I'm like, well, I go, if, if, if I'm in front of you right now, and I'm like, show me your hands, and you're not showing me your hands, how do I know you don't have a knife? Yeah, you can shoot somebody. Well, you can he goes up to you, I, I wouldn't do that. I, I forget about you. But how do I know you don't have a knife? Yeah. And how fast is it for me to attack you with a knife? But if you don't know that, if you haven't trained it, if you've never been taught it, explained it, if yeah. you've never seen the scenarios, the pressure testing, you think that, oh, well, the cops should just, you know, disarm him with a knife. It's not easy. No. Even with a woman, even when I've had Helen, Helen attack me with a marker full out like a fucking psycho and she's a stunt woman. Those are the, cut, those are the scariest ones. Yeah. She cut me every time. But, and I knew yeah. she When a knife is at play, you always expect to get cut once, right? Yeah. It's, yeah, it's, that's why when I teach knife defense, right, I start the fight, not when the knife is out. I'm always like, how did he get you know, three to six feet to you? How did he pull out the yeah. weapon? Was the weapon pulled out or concealed? How did, and when did he attack you? All this, you missed it. So people cover the knife, oh, when it's out. No, how did he get? Yeah. Three to six feet. How did you not see the hand coming out or concealed? And at what point did he pull out? So I work and I train. The instant I can't see his hands and I'm talking to him, I'm looking at his hands. Where is he moving? Is he angling off? Do I have an improvised weapon? Are they two? How, where do I step in? Can I move? Can I use something? Do I create distance? Sometimes you might think, oh, I should create distance against the knife. Maybe you're better off to be close so you can jam it because you're in a closed environment. This is shit people don't think about unless you've done it enough times yeah. in training. No, I've tested that's it out absolutely to true, man. But you know, a lot of percent agree with that. Yeah, you know, but that's also like some people, you know, that they 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 show a technique and they perfectly trap the knife. But in my mind, that only happens, you know, if you get to the weapon hand before he pulls it out. If the knife is already swinging, 
It's fair. Oh, it, it's yeah. the same. I mean, try to trap a hand from, you know, from a trained boxer, you know, who's jabbing you in the face. It, you never, why, it's why impossible. You, yeah. I mean, why do people think it's, it's, it's possible to trap, you know, a knife hand uh, when it's not, po when they know it's not possible to trap, you know, uh, a, a jabbing hand from a boxer. It's the same thing. You know, it's, it moves very quickly and it doesn't have to be any power. So, it, so they can just swing it around. You but know, like um, you said, the psychopaths, when they hold the knife, you know, it's, Almost impossible to even get get it from from their hands because there's you know they're so f so full of drugs or so full of you know they're, wi they're, they're wired they're they're full of adrenaline and their intent is to kill you and not stop. Yeah. So it's not it's not I mean as much as you train it it's not easy right it's and I'm yeah. not here to tell people it's easy but I mean I'll give you share with you an example because sometimes people I, you know I get the stupid comments you're an idiot what are you yeah, doing yeah. you know. Uh, I had a guy write to me. He was like, "Me, thank you. You saved my life." He was a, he was attacked in yeah. a like a, a type of concert last year. Mm -hmm. uh, the guy pulled out a knife, and everybody panicked. And he goes, "I picked up the chair. It was kind of like a like a like a like a big was it chair." A like chair? Sit, no, like one of those big like more the like rich ones. chairs. Yeah, like something. Yeah, okay. yeah. He goes, I, I started panicking and I started swinging the chair and it hit his hand by complete fluke. I don't have any training. Yeah. It hit his hand. The hand, the knife dropped and everybody jumped in. Now, you might tell me, the guy had no training. He watched the video. But would he have thought to pick up a chair if he never saw that video? Probably not. Probably not. I think the majority of people, maybe 9 out of 10, would think, run away. But, yeah, that, you know, that's what most people, people think. Run away, run away. You know, that that's our our natural instinct not which is know. which is good but if you try to you know you i tell people you can't run through a car you can't no. run through an elevator you know it's good it's not good very easily at least you know, no it, indeed you know it's good but not in all situations but that, that like, only comes uh, from experience and that's where like you take, come take, in take 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 a woman in her in her skirt and her heels she gets attacked in a parking lot she's gonna run run where where she's gonna outrun somebody like me impossible well, what's she's worse? probably going to run to the scene of the crime, I'm afraid. Uh, like, what's worse? Turning around, facing him and trying to fight, yeah. fight him? Or, like, facing him and fighting? Or trying to run away and then he has you by the back, stabbing you while you're on the ground? Yeah. But to be honest, you know, I also, that's also what I love about your teachings. You know, you teach, like you just said, you know, uh, what happens before that. Why are you alone in a parking lot, you know, at night with your car there? You know, couldn't you, you know, park the car right in front of the store? You know, you worked you know, that you can get into the car right away. Yeah, because you know what? And like, again, we, talk, we talked about MMA and self-defense and all this stuff. Yeah. Like, I, I, more and more I'm emphasizing, like, in my website, I created a series of 12 videos. I'm, I'm, I'm filming another 12. It's just safety tips. Meaning, how do I go to the bank machine? How do I walk alone? How do I go to my car? What do I do if I'm being followed? Uh, how do I know... How do I, you know, how do, how yeah. do I walk in my staircase and somebody's, this is just safety tips, things that some people don't know. If you yeah. don't know, you don't know. You've never seen them. You've never done them. You don't know. Do I turn around? Do I face them? Do I position myself? And this is a lot of the stuff that I'm teaching that has nothing to do with this, but just this. 90% right? of self-defense. Knowing, like knowing, knowing when am I in code green, code yellow, code red. Knowing your color codes, knowing when to turn on the antenna, the awareness antenna is when is it low and when is it high? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Rens, you know, Rens also, you, uh, you know, you do, do also do something similar with your girlfriend, you know, like something, you know, Nick, you teach something, you know, with a girlfriend, with you know, like knowing your places and knowing your roles, you know, in, in a oh, absolutely, man. Rens, can you tell something about that? Uh, you yeah, know, absolutely, Nick? like, um. I feel like you have a very similar like uh, teaching approach as Tim Kennedy with his sheepdog response. And I totally agree with that hundred percent. If you don't have situational awareness, like understanding where things happen and how you can avoid it. I mean, you can prevent a hundred out of a hundred cases of being violently assaulted. If you avoid a place that you know has a reputation for yeah. having like violent outbursts. <laughs> like if you go to a library there's a very slim chance that you're going to get accosted, assaulted, or even violated. Yeah. If you go down to where there's, you know, like I hate to point fingers right now, but if you go to an autonomous zone of any sort in America right now, where they're trying to fight the power, there's a good chance you could be assaulted, you could be violated, you could be um, yeah. harmed in very horrible you, ways, like you, even death. Yeah, but Rance, you also told me, you know, like with your girlfriend, you know, you also have, uh, 
like you know when you ever get attacked you know you told her you run right away you know you call the oh, police oh that yeah okay, and that's um... also something something very very uh, similar that, you know that nick teaches because nick you i saw some Absolutely. videos of you you know with like, a um... woman yeah that you put your hand you know on the back or something like that but ren still yeah. go ahead but anyway um one of the strategies i tell my girlfriend if we're ever walking and we feel like there's going to be an issue i immediately tell her you get a running start, I hold them off, you call the police immediately. Now, I'm not sure how bad this could be on my end, but I always tell them, I always tell my girlfriend, all right, you remember the role, the script. 911, someone's trying to violate my boyfriend. I don't know what they're doing, but he is, he's a virgin, just save him. <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah I'll, I'll, I'll always, work, you know what I mean? Always call the police, call the ambulance. Yeah. Absolutely. You, never, you, you never know if something were to happen. No. I, I, Here's a, you know, uh, I, I've been in situations, I mean, this might sound, you know, I mean, I was young, I was a little bit stupid, you know, I would. Weren't we yeah. all though? You know, well, drink. I still, I still am 21. So <laughs> yeah, oh I my He's the youngin' of the group. <laughs> actually, shit, I, what's weird is we're actually almost, I, 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 all 11 years apart right now. He's yeah. uh, 21, I'm 32, and you're 43. We're like yeah. a perfect uh, eleven years apart right now. Yeah. Let me t let me tell you guys. Like I mean, we're twenty years apart. Like I mean, and twenty one, twenty two. I was uh, starting to work in clubs and bars. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, I was a little bit stupid, man. I won't lie to you guys. You know what I mean? I used to fucking drink. At, you know, I used to sit outside the club with my Jack and Coke, and you know, and you know, I was I was a I was a little bit of a dark phase in my life. I would drink and and I would I would lose control sometimes you know what i mean when when uh when i got comfortable working at the club right yeah uh, drink and uh and and you know what i mean and I, i've been in that situation where you know what i mean i almost got into a fight and 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 my girlfriend's there like oh my god she's pulling me down there i'm like yeah. and it's oh, kind geez. of like i you know and i i always made a rule after that with the girls i dated like like don't get involved i, I cannot like fight and think of you and, yeah, and like i can't exactly. fight and have you pull me back because I, I just just stop oh it's a bad idea yeah. just stop let me take care of it you know what i mean not me you know like and i've said it before and that's you know what i mean an agreement you should have with your partner if shit happens the instant you see me hit you run yeah You're precisely out. you go to a safe place right whatever you could find safe place call the ambulance call the police it doesn't matter tell them somebody's been injured tell them what happened just in case somebody gets hurt, you know, there's somebody coming there. Yeah. But I think, again, even that stuff that people don't, don't, don't think of, you know what I mean? But it's something with a partner you should have, especially if you know you're going to, I mean, go, go out and, and, you know, if you travel or if you go to, you know, uh, I mean, again, I, I always go back to working in clubs because other than working in clubs, I haven't, you know, been in many situations. You know, when you start going to clubs and bars, what do people do? They drink. A lot of drugs. People get stupid. You know, three in the morning. Yeah. But to be people, yeah. To be honest, you know, you see, uh, totally, you know, that that those situations you can't avoid. But there's a new trend coming, which is very scary to me. Uh, you know, to the Netherlands, we have 12, 13, 14 uh, year old boys. You know, kids that uh, are sometimes, you know, they they are carrying machetes. They are carrying big knives. And that came from, you know, the UK was one of the first countries we who really had that. And now the Netherlands starts, you know, in, in the lower class our areas, you know, in, from the cities, you know, downtown. Uh, the, the, those, those kids are carrying big knives, you know, and they are killing not, not only, you know, adult, adults, but, but only other kids, you know, from these youth gangs. And it's very scary to me. And it's very, you don't expect that from, you know, from a little kid, in my opinion. But... And, and you know what? Hey, I, I, it's a true story, and I, I think I talked about it before. I was about 19 or 20 years old, and I was playing basketball not too far from where I live. Yeah. And uh, there was about, you know, maybe 10, 15, maybe 13 to 16-year-old kids. And one of them was my size. Like, <laughs> this kid was big. Yeah. And um, an argument broke out with some other guys. And they wanted to, they wanted the court. They wanted all us to get out the court. An argument happened. These guys kind of ran kind of like an idiot. I stayed, right? Mm -hmm. and, I'm, and they're like, and next thing you know, they circle me like, 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 and, and I'm standing yeah. in the middle. You're in the Thunderdome, yeah. Yeah. And they're like going around 
and I see the kid pull like an ice pick with like tuck tape. I still remember like oh, it was yesterday. Jesus. This, oh, this is shit you don't scary. forget. Like the detail no. is you don't forget it. It's almost traumatizing. Right? It's like, and, and he's like, and he and he's got it like this, and he's walking, and they're walking around me, and they're like, I'm like, like I'm thinking, and in my head I'm calculating one, two, three, four. There are about six or seven, eight, nine. I remember in a few seconds I'm assessing my survival rate. Yeah, right. That's what you got to do, <laughs> right? I could I could take maybe one, two, let's say three, four, five. Like I mean, you're striking and you're getting the fuck out. You know, what I mean, you're not sitting yeah. there taking on 15 kids, right? No. And I know I saw one weapon and I'm thinking, how many of, how many more of them they have? All you know what I mean? Have weapons. So that could I, alter the percentage of survival for sure. Yeah. yeah, but I mean that, look, when it comes to self-defense, I tell people, it's all about, you know, your chance of survival. You got to be able to assess the situation and say, what are my chances of survival? Yeah. But how you know did it, mean? how did it uh, end? Finally, I just diffused it. I was like, here guys, you want the bomb, man? Take it, man. It's all yours, man. It's all yours. Like, you know what I mean? I'm like, Man, I'm thinking, motherfucker, I wish I could yeah. catch them one by one. I'll smash their face. Even two, on, even three on one, I wouldn't give a shit. Yeah. But in my head, I remember going one, two, three, four, yeah, and they're like... Yeah, but it's the same in the Netherlands. You know, the, these are 12 to 14-year-old kids, you know, and one by one, and I wouldn't have any problem with those. And, but, and, you know, and you know what in makes these them gangs dangerous? with like 20, 20 kids, you know, and they all have big knives, you know, it's very scary. Because and, they're... And you, know what, and you know what makes them dangerous is that one... They don't know the the consequences of what they're doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two, they don't care. Three, they're glorified or you know uh, looked yeah, upon as status this symbol. tough guy. It's a status motherfucker. Yeah. I stabbed this many people, uh, and they they're not aware of the level of danger of threat of the, what they're doing for them. It's a status. I've stabbed mm -hmm. you know uh, this many people, and it's yeah. And whether you're a great knife expert. You know, who does all this Cali fancy shit or whether you want to be yeah. psychopaths with a knife, you're just as dangerous. Maybe Try, even more. You know, even more. Take a 13-year-old kid, give him a knife and just let him come at you full speed. I guarantee no. it. You're <laughs> no. still going you're, you're still gonna to get cut with something. Yeah. You Try know, we, tra we trend with, you know, like white t-shirts and then a red marker. And the first time you do it, you know, you're used to grab. Even I, you know, I'm used to grappling. I know how to grapple. But even I, you know, I got stabbed so, uh, many times. And after that, you know, you know where to focus on. But still, it's very hard to do, you know, in, in close to, you know, prevent if somebody just goes uh, haywire. Haywire, you, absolutely. Yeah. You, and, and now imagine you don't even know what to do. Yeah, right? That makes it oh, worse. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's You're so gonna, much worse. I always give it the example as, you know, my son's 12 years old. They do like fire like fire, yeah. you know. Uh, oh, drill. fire drills, yeah. Fire drills. Why do they do it? When you hear the bell, you know, okay, get in. You have at least an idea person, of what to yeah. do. If you don't, you just start freaking out. I know if somebody were to attack me with a knife, I'm not telling you I would successfully 100%, uh, you know. No, it's bullshit. Most self-defense guys or some do bullshit, but I know what to do. Yeah. I know my Absolutely. brain is not going to short circuit because I've trained it enough. I know I might get cut. I'm okay with that. I accept Good. it. I might get cut. But let me tell you, I'm not just going to, you know, people tell me, well, there's nothing you could do. I go, great. If somebody attacks you with a knife, roll down <laughs> in a little ball and say, there's nothing yeah. I could do. Or fight. you could idea. attempt to yeah. give them a fight. You could attempt oh, to trap. Yeah. You could attempt you to You increase fight your that. life expectancy, you know, in, in, in immediately. That's all it is, right? There's no, here's the truth. There's no, like, I mean, there's certain martial arts that guarantee you. There, there's no guarantees. No, never. Right? Even it, pro fighters get knocked out and they know how to, you know, defend themselves. Yeah, it, 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 it's, it's, it's probabilities, right? And at the end, it's about probabilities and it's about enhancing your chances of survival. That's all it is. I, I always say, what's your higher chance of survival, right? I'll give you a great example right now. And, and a lot of self-defense is this. Yeah. I personally, I don't feel what I teach is that special. I don't, I like, I don't feel I teach something that's like, so for me, it's just logical. So yeah. sometimes I'll do drills with students where I'm like, okay, um, I have a knife. I'm, you're five feet away. There's a chair that you're sitting on. There's a door 10 feet away. And, there's an open hallway, 
like you can go out back this way. I have a knife. Okay. What are your greater chances of survival? Is it A? Oh, Nick, you. Sorry, uh, sorry. Uh, somebody oh, no. was calling me. I oh, go. No worries. Okay, I go. What are your greater chances of survival? A, picking up the chair. B, running to the door. C, going through the hallway. What is your greatest chance of survival? They have to think. Think. Because then you're going to do it. So, again, that is self defense, chair. awareness, and training. Yeah. Yeah, I would pick up the go. chair. Go for the chair and then, then slowly, you know, head back to the hallway. And barricade between you and the person. Exactly. Right? So, I mean, another additional I, factor that's always, like, bothered me about some people with knife defense is they keep this kind of thing going. It's like, don't put your – don't put those there. That's very vital. You know, at least cover yourself up a bit until you can grab something, which is a good idea. Well, you, you know what I've seen from my, from my perspective when I've done – because I've done this and I've trained them like this too. When the knife starts flying. Yeah. That's a good point. But when they're doing this or this, you won't even know if you're doing this or this. All you're good thinking points. is fucking trap the knife. But, I but know to be honest, yeah. yeah, but to be honest, Nick, you know, if I, you know, the, the one video that you did with the social experiment, you know, that you in the park, you know, let just people that uh, just stab you, you know, try to stab you and you defend it. You also, uh, you know, you, you, Bury the knife and then you try to trap it, of course. But uh, I think what Rance also means, some people, you know, they teach, you know, to just block and against oh, the knife. Oh, no, yeah. no. Okay, okay. Yeah, that I don't do. Like, I mean, no. sitting there and trying to block the knife or like, yeah, no. Yeah, exactly. Bad idea. No, no, I'm fucking... Thank you, Vincent. I, like, <laughs> the hardest thing against the knife is to teach the students to explode in. Yeah. It's the hardest that, thing to that do. That mental barrier. Yeah. Is to teach them... Sorry, guys, because... Oh, not a problem. Hey, we're getting a private tour of the studio. I love it, man. Thank you. <laughs> it's a very nice. Day. Yeah. So, so this is my. Bring Bob back. Where's Bob? Oh, there he's found. <laughs> so it, it's all about you know it's it's you want to explode forward, right? And that's yeah. the hardest thing to teach when I'm teaching knife defense is move in, don't move back, and anything. So even me sometimes if I'm sparring, I'll put in my head. Like every drill, every, every, like when I spar around, I'll be like, okay, in this round, I'm going to work on just stepping in. doesn't matter if I get hit. I'm stepping in. Boom. Boom. I'm working as the punches come in every time, finding my way to move in. Yeah. Right? When I train knife, the more you do it, it's like move in. And I'll tell the students, in, in, bam. If I have to, like, just to condition mm -hmm. because it's normal. Our instant might move back, but you got to shift it to move in. I totally get what you're saying, my man. But that, that's also with, for example, you know, a baseball bat. Uh, you know, your 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 instinct is to move back. But you know, the tip of the baseball bat. You know, that's the dangerous, most dangerous part. So you, it's much better, you know, to just get in there, you know, and trap it because then the the a blunt weapon like that is useless. But you know, you have to to have done it before you have to drill it before otherwise you wouldn't make that choice you would you know try to get away absolutely if, you you, have if to, somebody w was swinging at you like this of course you would try to run away you have you have to drill it and that's that's where your training comes in right like i mean you're going to train the way you fight yeah totally. you're not going to do some if, if you've never done think. it in training you're not going to be like oh let, let me let me headbutt i've never headbutted but now in this scenario i'm going to headbutt no so when i train on the bob or when i do drills when I train with students or yeah. like uh, my training partners, I do what I would do in the street. Like at one point I was training with Davis and I caught myself uh, doing a lot of MMA stuff. Yeah. And, and, and I was losing what I would normally do that I would tell Davis, I'd be like, look, do the MMA stuff. I'm going to do my stuff. Yeah. Because I was, I, I, I was getting into punching. I was more like, fighting like he yeah, was. slipping rolling yeah that, that's well, also like because you start to copy that you know because you have that that example in front of you and of course you know yes. Davis is, is a professional so up, fighter amazing yeah. athlete so absolutely but you pick up then you pick up his they're not bad habits they're good habits but i'm losing my good habits yeah instead of like you know so davis is teaching me how to shoot i'm like i i i, I yeah i, but, I don't i to be honest, like you said before, you know, those dirty tactics, you know, they are a great equalizer, you know, because you're older than, you know, he's 39, I believe, or 40, yeah. but he is, you know, in, 
he's a professional fighter shape. So but that's, that's but you see that, that, that that's the other thing. I mean, that's what he does for a living. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know so I mean? you know, it's it's. It's 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 also like I mean we talked a little bit of it before. I'm I'm 43. I'm going to be 44. I'm still in good shape. I still train hard. I don't enjoy getting punched in the head anymore, man. I, I, yeah. I like can't I still blame do you. It. Gotta yeah, gotta I, save those brains. I still do it because I, I want to keep my skills intact and I want to keep everything like sharp as sharp as possible. Because when I go to a seminar, I don't want to be talk. I want to be like. Yeah. Vincent, come, let's do it. I want to be able to Indeed. show you heard that, man, Vincent, <laughs> <laughs> that I could still do it. Well, next year in the Netherlands, I will definitely go into a seminar. By the way, oh man, I, I mean, I'm hoping next year I want to do something in Greece. So hopefully, I can get a whole bunch of people there. If Corona is over, I gotta gotta get a holiday to Greece <laughs> and maybe my girlfriend. We, we make, Greece is we by the way a great beautiful country. Too. Beautiful oh. country. I love it, man. I told but, you I love Amsterdam too, man. One of my favorite <laughs> cities. After Greece, I always say it. Amsterdam. I even told my girlfriend, I go, we got to go to Amsterdam. It's a unique city. You don't see, you know, it because for such a big city, it's all, you know, like smaller buildings in comparison to, the, you know, the skyscrapers. But I thought, see, I was under the impression it was very, very safe. Amsterdam, well, yeah, Netherlands? it depends, it depends. The Netherlands are very safe indeed, and, but some neighborhoods, you know, they are known for violence. But no, now yeah. in, you know, in some neighborhoods, you know, you have kids who grow up, you know, and now you see really the, the youth gangs coming and that wow. we weren't used to that. So the police don't, don't know how to handle it yet. Well, you know what, it, 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 it spreads, man, you know what I mean? And Totally. It's, it's crazy because they're, it starts when they're young and, and, and Some again. Some of them are still dead like when they're older. Yeah. And, and again, I mean, they're that dangerous. You know, if somebody says, well, it's just a kid. He's just 12 years old with a knife. Really? Let me that's bring that 12 years old with a knife. Yeah. He's yeah. an attacker with a knife. He's an att that's the way you got to see. It. When you look at knife, you got to look at it as an attacker. I don't care. Male, female. Mm -hmm kid or not it's freaking dangerous and when it starts absolutely flying like like my, my son's starting to train with me now right yeah. and uh i got knives and everything in the back and he's like daddy daddy what'd you do what'd you do and he starts swinging i'm like <laughs> even even he's coming at me i'm thinking fuck like right i'm using my legs i'm yeah. still parrying him i'm thinking shit like i remember like once he just it just Skin me still with the sometimes knife, it like, can even be harder to you know deal with a smaller you know a smaller you know smaller <laughs> opponent because they're full of energy you know they move and like, i'll be honest with you we'll start it when you're ready All right here's the recording now uh nick i wanted to ask you a question about the guy uh, you called moose you know the the big very very big guy how was training with him and how uh, did you learn, you know, different things about your system, you know, applying to a big person like that? So I, I filmed two weeks ago with Moose. We filmed 16 self-defense videos. Right. I love that. Okay. Uh, he's, he's Moose, right? He's really that. 6'6", 315 pounds. And, and, athletic. What's in, and, and he's fast. He was a football yeah. player, right? So what was interesting is we made the videos and, you know, I started pressure testing some of the stuff, yeah. right? Example, okay, I'm like, Moose, I'm going to kick you. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And, you know, there's certain stuff that would work with the average sized guy yeah. that didn't work with Moose. Makes sense. Right? Because he's just too big. You can't move his and arms. You can't move his head. No, no. Fuck. If you think you're going to sprawl, and I said it in the video, if you think you're going <laughs> to sprawl against a 315-pound guy coming yeah. like a fucking tank, you're not I'm sorry, but, but I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm framing. I'm moving to the side, but I'm not going to Oh, sprawl. yeah, absolutely. Lateral ex movement all the way for that. Exactly yeah. what I said, I'm right? Moving. There's no way yeah, I'm exactly. sprawling. I'm jamming it. If the most, if I stop, it's just to like break and move. Yeah. That's it. But I, rem I remember one video, you know, it started with him, you know, grabbing your throat and putting you against the wall. Uh, a, a friend of mine, dear friend of mine, he's like the size of moose and he did it to me too. And I was like, holy shit, you know, you can't breathe. It's very, very scary. We watched that video and I was like, do you want to try it? <laughs> it, it? It's crazy. So like, I mean, when I, made, when I did the series with him, 
Yeah. I realized that, you know, like, I mean, you're going to see the videos. We did wild punches. He actually tried to punch me in the face yeah. and I'm blocking the punches, like blocking some, slipping some, and just the punch like this big on the elbows that I parried, like yeah. some I parried, some I slipped, some I got hit. I blocked. I mean, every time you block the punch, man, your, your whole body shakes. Yeah. It's just too big. And you learn, how do you take somebody out like that fast? You got to hit him hard. You got to hit him first. You got to go preemptive. You got to sucker punch him. But here and we you also, hit. in yeah. one video, he also realized, you know, himself that he wouldn't want to try himself against a guy his size. Let yeah. alone, you know, <laughs> more normal human beings like us. Yeah, when you have two guys at 300 pounds going at it, uh, it's like, uh, you know, it's, it's like it's a like bear a versus a gorilla. Pretty it, much. It, it, yeah. it's, 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 it's pretty I'd deep. love to watch it, but I don't think they want to <laughs> face each other, to be honest. You know, they're, hey, they're, let's, they're, hey, bear, what's up, gorilla? Let's go get a drink and said, I don't want to fight. Yeah, All right, really. fine. No, but it, it's that, it's that, um, he's that, uh, and, and he moves well. So at one point, we were kind of sparring. And I mean, I'm thinking, shit, if this was real, holy shit. Like, I, you better have good footwork. You better have good timing. You better have good speed. You better be able to move and hit and move and hit and move yeah. and be able to nail yeah, that. Is that distance strike. for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Distance management against a big, big guy like that? Oh, 100%. Yeah, I don't think I want to clinch with that. When he grabs your wrist there, you know, you, you won't turn out of it. He just has no. your wrist. That's a no Aikido no, zone there. But no, because absolutely you, not. You know, you have to go soon, so we prepared to do this with every single guest. We have a little speed round. You know, Rance always starts it most of the time. Right. <laughs> and it's like quick questions, and you have to answer it, it uh, you know, right off the top of your head. You can talk cool. a little bit about it, but don't think too much. Okay, absolutely. Right. So, um, Grants, Grants, you this have has become, start. Absolutely. This has become a chat combat classic for me to ask because so far it's been an undefeated question, and I have a feeling you might answer the same way. Who would you rather fight in the streets, Steven Seagal or Jean Claude Van Damme? Uh, Steven Seagal. Everybody, Everybody says said it. said that so far. <laughs> Everybody said that. <laughs> All right, going next, on the compilation. <laughs> yeah, the, the, that one is going on the compilation. But uh, next, next question: Which is better for self-defense? Oh, you know, solely wrestling or boxing? Boxing. All right, next question, Renz. Okay, would you rather take on a person wielding a solid object like a bar or a flexible object like a chain? Bar. Good answer. All right. All right, nice. Uh, would you rather, you know, have to deal with a 13-year-old kid with a knife or, you know, a guy like Moose, if you had to choose? Uh, wow. How big is that 13-year-old? Yeah, not so big. I, I, like a regular 13-year-old uh, with a knife. Who's, who's crazy? I would take Moose. Not a bad call. Not a bad All call. right, game changer for you, man. Peanut butter and jelly, strawberry or grape? <laughs> strawberry good answer all right if you had to choose where to live you know forever canada or greek oh greece all the way man <laughs> i can't 10 more years and i'm out of here <laughs> I love it's that canada. island breeze well, isn't it it's, it's, that it's was the, the end of the speed route nick i would really really want to thank you very much for being on here i never imagined you know even talking to you in person like this because you know i've been a fan of you for years Rens likes your stuff too Absolutely, man. You know what, guys? I tell this to instructors is be humble. We're not too good for anybody. Like I, I've seen a few instructors that they think they're, no, I, I do podcasts with everybody. I like to meet people. I'm, I'm happy to, to reach out to people when they want help, when they have questions, when they want to collaborate to build their business or build. I, I'm, like, I mean, None of us are above anything, you know what I mean? So we have to, you know, share. And, I you love know, that and, mindset. Thank you. And that's, absolutely. Thank you very much, my man. Like I said, I think you're the best self-defense guy on YouTube. And thank you, man. you're one thank of you. the guys who I, you know, started to follow five, six years back, you know, very regularly, you know, watching every video, learning from it. Uh, so I'm, I'm very happy, you know, that you wanted to be here. Hopefully you want to come back. Uh, oh, definitely, guys. It was Fingers a lot of crossed. fun. Absolutely. Yeah, thank we you would love to have you back very well, soon. Then I wish you had, I don't know what time it is right there in Canada, but. Yeah, it's about 3, 3, 3. 3.27. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Better. Plus or minus three minutes. <laughs> then I want to thank you uh, for being on here. Have a very nice day. You know, have 
good luck with what you have to do uh, this day. And Renz, do you want to say something or Nick? No, let's um, see, guys. Oh. Oh, not a problem. I was just thinking, um, well, I can't say later taters yet. We haven't quite ended. <laughs> <laughs> no, let's see, guys. But I'm definitely right, glad guys. that you came. Very yeah, glad. Thank you guys so much for having me on. I'm definitely going to come back because it was a lot thank of fun. You. I'm sure there's a lot of stuff we're covering. And uh, that's it, guys. Stay safe. Thank you, my man. Absolutely. Travel safely. And as always, later taters. Later.